Look at this, dude. Roy Earl is on this like five times. He gets 450 bucks. December 4th, 46. Roy Earl. Roy Earl was the last one. 1947, September 18th. What a shit box. I'm guessing Benson's portfolio is only a fraction the size of yours, Monroe. Smart. Keep the dirt on Fontaine under lock and key. This is your insurance. Suburban Redevelopment Fund. Remind me what they say about absolute power, Monroe. It corrupts absolutely. F fuck you, Jack. Ah, call me an ambulance already. Eh, maybe next week. Dr. Fontaine, I need to speak with you urgently. Sit down. Please, sit down. Tell me about the Suburban Redevelopment Fund. It's the fund we are using to channel money into the development of new houses. Why is my name on the board of managers? Technically, you are a major contributor. Please call me. Those houses are a sham, Doctor. They're going to be burned for the insurance. That's a scandalous allegation, Courtney. Do you have any proof? Jack Kelso, an investigator for California Fire and Light, has seen them. He was almost killed when he found out what was going on. I don't know what to say. I feel that I have been duped. Who do you think is behind this subterfuge? Jack says it's a property developer named Monroe. He said it goes all the way to the mayor. You cannot have believed that I was involved. I don't know what to believe anymore, Doctor. I hope that you weren't involved. Thank you for your trust, dear boy. Be still, Courtney. All of your troubles are finally over. Let them go. Let them. Drift away. <laughs> Some sold up. The others obviously didn't know the links these sons of bitches would go to. It can't be stopped, Kelso. There's too much money at stake. Kingdoms rise and kingdoms fall, Monroe. Ask the Emperor of Japan. Have some fucking mercy! Operator, put me through to Phelps, arson squad. Yeah, Biggs, it's Jack. I'm at Monroe's. He's in a talkative mood. If you get here in a hurry, you might get something before he bleeds to death. Elsa. Oh, thank God. Where? Fontaine. Dead? Former patient. <laughs> so that crazy son of a bitch finally came back for a checkup. It's Monroe. He's raving. You want information, cocksucker. You get me some medical help. I've got to go, Herschel. Monroe's negotiating. Do you want my final offer, Leland? Tell me how I find the guy who has Elsa. Not Casey. He did whatever Fontaine asked. He had some kind of power over him. He, he, he did all the fires and then a he went off the rails. Roll. I don't have a fucking...
your name? He worked at the bug sprayer. Get me a goddamn doctor. Good morning, Doctor. And a good morning to you, too, Elsa. You look radiant. Thank you, Doctor. We haven't been seeing much of you lately, Elsa. You've been missing appointments. I'm sorry, Doctor. I've been feeling much better. That's very good to hear. And what has brought about this improvement? It's the new man in my life. He's convinced me to fight my addiction. Ah, the policeman from the newspapers. How has he coped with his fall from grace? He can finally see things from a human perspective, rather than the ivory tower he created for himself. It's making him stronger, and it's making me stronger helping him. You wouldn't make a bad analyst yourself, Elsa. Should we swap seats? <laughs> They're both finding we have a lot to give up. And what is that? In my case, Lou, he went through hell along with me and still came out smiling. In Cole's case, his friend, Jack Kelso. Kelso? You've heard of him? No, uh, I just like the sound of his name. Cole and Jack are working on a case together. Is Jack a policeman too? No, he works for the district attorney. What? He's a special investigator. I thought you didn't know him. I have never met the gentleman in question. He has been looking into Lou's case. Or things that might be linked to some fires he's investigating. You look pale, Doctor. It's cold in here, Elsa. I think I'll close the window. Why are you looking at me like that, Elsa? You arranged for Lou to work at Elysian Fields, Doctor. Your fears are unfounded. I meet many people in my line of work. There are many ways that people can be helped. Finding them work is just one of them. I don't believe you, Doctor. I've seen you with Monroe at the club. I'm sorry that you have come to that conclusion, Elsa. I've always so enjoyed our conversation. <laughs> I can see your future, Elsa. And Cole, the policeman. And Jack, the investigator. It's an unfortunate and grisly end. Some justice about time. I've come to help you, Doctor. To help you cross over. All your sins will be forgiven. The next slide. Gotta be one of these places. The arsonist's a bug sprayer. He must have worked at one of these joints.
gallantly on distant foreign shores to secure our freedom. Help you? How many guys you have working here, Pop? Who's asking, son? It could be official or unofficial. Depends on how you want to play it. You should get to a hospital, son. That arm of yours appears to be letting in daylight. Save the pity for the other guys. They're the ones who need it. I'm looking for a big cowboy who works pest control. Does he work here? We don't have anyone like that here. You sure? I'm not the type of guy you want coming back. Yeah, I'm sure. What have you got? Looks like a drug overdose. Get away from him, Phelps. This is my case. Shut your fucking mouth. Since when does a bag man work a case? I knew this creep wasn't on the morphine heist. Victim of his own product. Hey, detective! Can we back it off a notch? This is getting out of hand. It's a time to talk and a time to shut up. Now is the time to be quiet, son. Courtney Sheldon was a corpsman, Roy. He served his country. He went out with a medical kit and an Army 45 into places that made the Valley of Death look like a picnic. He was either naive enough or dumb enough to get involved in the Suburban Redevelopment Fund, along with the mayor, the DA, Monroe, and a certain crooked cop. He was involved in the morphine heist, but he has a puncture wound in his jugular, which makes this a murder case. He was a better man than you'll ever know. You say one more word about him and I will blow your fucking head off! You finally lost it, partner. I have a pretty good idea why Sheldon is dead. And I know about Monroe. Your vast, corrupt future is draining away as we speak. <laughs> I got better things to do than argue the rub with you. Stay with him until the coroner gets here. Make sure technical services bags the evidence. If you let this creep anywhere near it, I'll come looking for you. Yes, sir. You know, Phelps, you're not the worst asshole going around. Thanks, Herschel. Shit, Cole isn't fucking around anymore, you notice that? Like, everybody is, uh, serious business now. So I'm guessing this isn't our place. Let's try this place. I work for the DA. I'm looking for a big cowboy who does extermination. Anyone like that working here? Well, I wouldn't want to get anyone into any trouble. We could do this the hard way. An address? Yeah. He lives in a bunkhouse on the remains of the old Rancho Rincon. Thanks. Just walking around with a gunshot wound. <laughs> oh my god. Oh, we're playing as Cole now. Cole, you made it. What's this got to do with me, Rusty? Dr. Fontaine, prominent shrink. Dead in his patient's room. Spine snapped like a twig. The suspect is one of his mental patients. I've met Fontaine. 
His last patient was Elsa Lickman Cole. She's missing. <laughs> Nurse said that she saw some big Boris Karloff type carry her out of here. The best thing that you can do to help me, Rusty, is let me take a look around. Sure thing, Cole. This way. Take your time. I'll give you and the doctor some privacy. Monroe wasn't happy. People started dying and it attracted attention. And the doctor lost control. Fontaine was having the houses burned for Monroe. These are things we already know. So much for your foresight, Doctor. Good doctor has been marking this map. Magpie. being built in the path of the freeway? That goddamn pet lunatic of yours is burning down our houses. Keep your voice down, Leland. Control is of the essence. Keep your voice down. Do you know how much these sons of bitches charge for lunch? Fuck them. <laughs> Not solve our problems by announcing them to the general public. We only speed ourselves on our way to the gallows. If you're imbecile, Harlan, get him under control or get rid of him. Speaking of which, I've had to dispose of our young medical students. What? Certainly are a cold character, Harlan. He has a friend called Kelso knows all about the development on Normandy Avenue. I know about it, Delta. And you thought it unimportant to inform me. I thought I could take care of it. Have you? No, I haven't. Kelso works for Benson. Is he reliable? No, he's totally unreliable. But he has so many pernicious habits, he's got nowhere to run. Can you take care of Kelso? Don't push me, Harlan. Get rid of the fruitcake. No longer necessary. I'll take care of you. Yes. It's just kind of funny that the doctor literally got killed by Forrest Gump. I'm just saying, you know what I mean? <laughs> he totally got killed by Forrest Gump. Strangled. Destroyed by a monster of your own creation, Dr. Fontaine. I've heard that story somewhere before. Probably by Mary Shelley's Frankenstein. Nothing. Got no pockets. 
No, I don't want to look at that again. That's Cole's latest blood. Is that all that's in here? This isn't what we're looking for. Looks like Fontaine has finally dispensed his last treatment. Jack was wrong. It's not about insurance, it's about eminent domain. What are you talking about, Cole? The government reclaims the land in the path of the freeway and pays the improved value of the land with the new houses sitting on it. What about the stiffs who paid their deposits? Worst case, they get their money back. But the syndicate pockets millions on the improved value of the land. So where does Jack's boss come into it? He's the key. He carries the insurance. The insurance proves how much the houses are worth. And they're worth nothing? Firewood, all of them. That's about as neat a scam as you can imagine. How are we going to prove any of this, Cole? The doctor's dead. And Roll nearly bled to death. If they get Jack... We need the fire bug. The Oki cowboy. Get him, get Elsa. Get him, get all of them. All right, here we go. Guess nobody's home. Flamethrower? Those guys bring home a 45 or an M1. This is pretty extreme. Quite a flock you got here, kid. The river tunnels. This guy's a tunnel rat. A strange obsession. He's the next soldier. That was that dude that went in when... Christ, I know Holy shit, I know it. That's that dude that goes in after Phelps' orders. Hazenbaum or whatever. Oh my god, Ira. You poor backward son of a bitch. Peterson, I'm going to need some help. I've got Monroe, Fontaine, and all the others. It's all tied up nicely. It goes all the way to the top. Meet me at the L.A. River Tunnel entrance just north of the First Street Bridge in half an hour. Don't ask questions. Just be there.
This is DA's investigator Jack Kelso. I have an urgent radio message for Detective Cole Phelps. Suicide note. Half the LAPD will be down there hunting for us. When we get there first. All units on all frequencies stand by. Car 86 Adam is in pursuit of suspect vehicle heading southwest on Sunset Boulevard. Suspect vehicle belonging to Jack Kelso, described as a Navy Chevrolet fleet line. License number 4, William 0286. Car 86 Adam is in pursuit. I picked up his car. We'll need help to make it to the river. All I want is to kill Roy Earl. That's it. I don't care. That's all I want to do is kill him dead. Totally not me. He's still shooting from the window. Shit. <laughs> Bring it. I'm a demon of the road. Not getting around me, dude. Ah, he spun out himself. What a turn, Jack. Jeez. I never expected him to turn. I figured that was the bridge. Peterson, assistant DA. What's he doing? He's here to cover our backs. I'm going in there, Jack. No one's trying to stop you. I found this at the ranch house. He's marked his routes. I'll go in here. Cole, you take the next entrance. Biggs, I need you to take the car and cover the spot here. I think that's his fail safe exit. Cole, he's one of ours. What are you talking about? Right where you are! Got it? Got it. Peterson, you want to be DA? We'll earn your salt. So, Kelso is your boy, Peterson? You're working with Phelps? A handy lad, that Kelso. Yes, he is, Chief. You can't imagine what those two have uncovered. It could go all the way to the top. 
I'd hope you won't be implicated. So, you're the new Brome Peterson? Looks like it. And you think he'll make it out of there alive? I think he might. He's a difficult boy to get rid of. All right, Peterson. I'm listening. What's your offer? 